morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to another live crochet along. Um, I would just like to thank Nico right off the bat for gifting a membership and congratulations to Crochet Crazy who won it. And also quickly a membership milestone from Jojo. Jojo and Nico both getting going early here. <laughs> Jojo says, we'll be lurking while I work on crocheting six bats for my daughter's friends. I made her Jada's bat. Now all of her friends want one too. That's awesome. We do have a really cute little bat um, crochet amigurumi pattern. It's one of our pocket pet patterns. So if you're looking for a little last minute cute toy to make, that's a real quick and cute little project. And um, you know what? We'll link to that in the description box down below after today's video. But today we are going to be making leg warmers. This is going to be the live crochet along version of the leg warmer, the vertical strike leg, leg warmer tutorial that we did back in 2014. This is almost a 10 year old pattern. Um, and speaking of patterns, we wrote it up finally. It's in the Etsy shop available for purchase. A couple people had recently asked for it. It's a super simple scrap busting pattern. I'm gonna tell you today how you can also use different yarns. I'm going to be making a Christmas version of today's pattern. So uh, I'm kind of, I'm already, I know, I know tomorrow's Halloween, but I'm already kind of looking ahead to Christmas and I'd like a cozy pair of leg warmers to scoot around the house in while I bake my Christmas cookies. And uh, I do like wearing leg warmers. I wear them sometimes, um, but especially deep in the winter because it can get really cold here in Canada, like bone chilling cold. And even though you've got the, the, the temperature turned up in the house, sometimes if you're sitting around for long periods of time, or maybe even if you work in a really cold office, um, I just find sometimes the long socks aren't enough. So I like a pair of leg warmers just to help keep myself cozy. And they're cute too. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, the pattern for our leg warmer tutorial also includes the, oh my gosh, Judith, thank you. <laughs> Judith has just picked up a pattern at the shop. Um, the leg warmer pattern also includes a little star pattern that we put on as an, like a little um, applique in our original pattern. If I have time today, I might do that too. Um, it's just kind of a cute way to add a little extra unique bling <laughs> to your, uh, leg warmers, but I've, other, I've also got a few other fun little ideas for decoration that we'll talk about today. So let's talk uh, pattern uh, information. We're going to use a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. You might find a measuring tape is handy because if you want to make these custom to fit you or you want to change up the yarn and hook you're using, then you're going to want some measurements. Um, and I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook. That's because I'm using a size four medium weight yarn. Now this is your typical I9 middle of the road hook. Uh, and I saw Nick, Nico mentioned maybe using a chunky weight yarn. If you wanna use a thicker weight yarn, no problem, but you're gonna to wanna to use a bigger hook, maybe a J or a K hook, uh, like six to six and a half millimeter. And you're going to need about probably the same amount of yarn. This works out to about 200 yards total for adults, maybe 140, uh, 140 yards for children. And that's total. So I'm gonna be using two colors, in which case I'll need about 100 yards each. I've got red and green going. If you don't want to change colors, if you want to use a self-striping yarn, or if you wanna just make it a crazy stash busting pair of leg warmers where you're just knotting in the next color as one runs out, um, then you don't have to snip your yarn at the end of every other row and rejoin your yarn. You can just kind of keep chaining um, and turning, chaining and turning, and I'll talk about that as we get into it. Um, if you are going to um, do a custom measurement, so I'm gonna give you measurement chain, foundation chain lengths for children and adults today based on um, this hook and this yarn. But if you wanna do your own measurements, you're gonna to need to measure from your knee to your ankle and write that measurement down. You can do it in inches or centimeters, doesn't matter. And you wanna take the circumference measurement of the widest part of your leg beneath your knee. So maybe that's your calf muscle, um, that's usually the widest part is your calf muscle, but if you've got, um, you know, larger um, legs under your, under your calves or if you have swelling issues or something, this will allow you to get a pair of uh, leg warmers that will fit you comfortably and not be too tight. So take those two measurements if you want to make a custom pair and just write down how many chains and how many rows you wind up doing so you can make both of them exactly the same. All right, um, Mr. and Stitches is here. Hello, everybody. And uh, I know he's linked our uh, Etsy shop up top. 
as uh, we like to do sometimes here on the show, today's brand new written up pattern for our 10 year old tutorial is on sale. So it's a little sneaky sale. Our leg warmer tutorial, um, I should say our leg warmer pattern, striped, vertical striped leg warmer pattern is 15% off today and tomorrow. So if you wanna pick that up, uh, thank you very much because it helps us out a tremendous amount here. And um, let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna start with my red yarn. I'm gonna make my first stripe and then I'm gonna switch to my green yarn. And my personal challenge today is to see if I can make both pairs. So I know I'll definitely get one leg warmer done today. I'm gonna see if I can get them both done, uh, but we shall see. Nice and simple. We're only using the half double crochet stitch. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a single crochet. It's a little bit smaller than the double crochet. And that means that you have fewer spaces in between your stitches. So I feel like this is a good stitch for leg warmers since leg warmers should be warm. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. For children, um, unless you are doing your own custom number, I recommend you chain 44 for children 54 for adults, or you're going to chain a length that measures, um, equals that measurement without stretching between your knee and your ankle. So let's say you measured between your knee and your ankle and you got maybe 14 or 16 inches, you would just start chaining until without stretching, you had a foundation chain length that matched that measurement. So that's how you do a custom one. And once you get that number of chains done, write it down because you wanna make sure you do the exact same thing for leg warmer number two, I will be chaining 54 because I'm basing it off of this hook and this yarn and I want it to kind of comfortably reach from my knee to my ankle. Why do I have an, a knot here? How did that come across? Let's get that out of there. Um, 44 for children and your custom number, your custom foundation chain row uh, once you've got it and it measures your found your measurement properly, add two extra chains for turning. Um, this ch in this pattern, the turning chains don't actually equal a stitch, um, so it's it's a little easier, especially if you're using sort of a funky kind of yarn. Um, you're looking ex you're looking for every single stitch. You're not skipping the first stitch because the chain two doesn't count as a half double crochet. So let's see where am I in? Thank you so much for picking up a pattern, Maria. I'm gonna zip along here and I'm gonna recount my stitches in a second. I wanna make sure I have 54. Shell, Shell managed to drop in before work. Thank you, Shell. Shell with a membership milestone says, happy Monday, just finished watching the original tutorial. Oh, perfect. Love the idea of a Christmas inspired bear. So much cozy fun. Thanks for these weekly lies. Well, thanks for being here, Shell. I know you're gonna, you got a busy day ahead. <laughs> Okay, so there's 44. So that's, if you're making them for children, I recommend 44. I've got 10 more to add for me. Okay, and there's 54. So 54 chains for an adult or a custom number that matches without stretching your knee to ankle measurement. Um, if you're doing the custom number, add an extra two. The 44 and 54 chain count includes the two turning chains, but I wanna make sure that if you're doing a custom uh, measurement that you add those extra two chains at the end because you don't want to sort of jip yourself a little bit of space. Okay, we are all going to use the half double crochet stitch. We're going to skip the first two chains from the hook. We're going to half double crochet into the third. And we're going to half double crochet into every single chain all the way back. And that will be 42 stitches for children. 52 stitches for adults or your original custom number uh, from your original custom foundation row because we're not counting the chain two as a stitch. Thank you everybody who's been dropping in. Marie, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Thank you very, very much. It helps us greatly. Uh, we really enjoy doing these Monday Lives, and of course we love doing our Friday videos too. Um, so when you guys are able to help us out, we really, really appreciate it because it allows us to keep doing it. 
I'm gonna half double crochet in each chain all the way across, nice and easy. Like I said, my personal goal this, this Monday morning live stream is to see if I can get the both pairs made in the same live stream. And I'm gonna aim to see if I can do that in an hour. This is a really easy pattern. So if you're new to crochet and you've never really made anything um, wearable before. Leg warmers are a nice place to start. They were in fact one of the first patterns um, or first wearables I was encouraged to to knit when I first learned to knit all the way back when I was a very little 11 year old uh, because they're easy. They're an easy pattern. They're basically just creating a tube um, and they're useful too. Like I say, if you especially if you live here in Canada, it can get pretty darn chilly. And having an extra pair of something to pull on over your legs really helps. I get I get really cold feet. <laughs> I see a lot of people talking about the potentiality of snow tomorrow. Yes, I think it looks like the, the temperatures took a dive right across the continent. Um, it, I, we, of course, assumed it was just us here in Canada, but it looks like it was everywhere. Okay, that's a half double crochet in each of those chains all the way back. So that will be 52 stitches for me. It'll be 42 stitches if you're making them for children. You're gonna have the same number of stitches in every single row throughout. If you're making a custom number, it's your original custom foundation number. It does not include the two extra turning chains. These are the two extra turning chains over here. We're not using them as a double or as a, as a half double crochet stitch. We're just using them to turn. And sometimes you do that in crochet. Chain two and turn at the end of every row. Now, because we are not using these guys as the chain, um, as a stitch, we are going to skip the two turning chains, these guys, and we're gonna work a half double crochet into the very first stitch. Now, if, it was a if we were counting this as a stitch, we would skip the first stitch, but we're not using them. So you're gonna half double crochet into that real stitch. You're gonna half double crochet into every stitch all the way across. And you're not going to half double crochet into the top of the chain two. We're just ignoring the turning chains for this pattern. And that's gonna give us a little extra oomph at the end of every row, which is kind of nice. Gives the, uh, gives the edges of this pattern um, just a little something extra. So I am going to do two rows of half double crochet per color for my vertical stripes. If you're using a self-striping yarn, you're just gonna continue to chain two and turn at the end of every row. You're not gonna bother changing colors. You don't have to. Um, if you want longer, or I should say wider stripes, you don't have to change colors at the end of every row. You can change colors whenever you want, maybe every three rows, every four rows, whatever you like. Um, and if you're just making a crazy, sort of ball pair of leg warmers where you're just tying in the next color after it ends. You don't have to worry about uh, changing colors or cutting your yarn at the end of every row either. Every other row, I should say. Or if you just want solid colored leg warmers, you just chain two, turn, and half double crochet in every single stitch until you reach your target row, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment right after I change colors for the first time. So this is a super easy, adaptable pattern. You can make the vertical stripes skinny. You can do them change colors every row if you want. You can make them exactly the way I'm doing them. You can make them really wide. Uh, you don't have to change colors at all. It's a fun way to make a tubular pair of leg warmers. So I'm at the end of the row. I've got one more stitch to work into. So you see there's my last stitch. There's the turning chains right here. I'm only half double crocheting into the top of the actual stitch. I'm ignoring the turning chains. So no worries. You don't have to think about the turning chains for this project. And I have now done two rows of half double crochet. It's time to change colors. Um, if you were going to add a bunch of funky edging or maybe some novelty yarns, like some crazy fluff or fur around the tops and bottoms of your um, leg warmers, then you could technically carry your colors, in which case you don't 
fasten off, you just join in your next color and then you just pull the next color along the top. And what ends up happening is you get kind of a length of yarn covering the edge of your next vertical stripe because if you do two rows for every color, you will always end up changing colors at the same place, so up top. Uh, but if you want to carry your yarns, you're going to end up with like a, a length of yarn covering the, the inside of your leg warmers. Now, I don't want that, so this is why I've decided to just, and I did this in the tutorial too, just snip my yarn, fasten off, and then I'm going to be sewing, I'm going to be crocheting right over top of it again with my next color. So this is why I'm changing colors. I feel like it ends with a, a neater top. I don't have to worry about weaving in any tails. The tails, I'm going to end up crocheting over top of them all. I've got some lovely Bernat Premium acrylic here. This is their evergreen color. It's very Christmassy. Joining a new color, easy peasy. Just make a slip knot on your hook. And you can join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch. Chain two. And I'm going to half double crochet into the same place because I'm not counting the chain two as a stitch. Now I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch, working over top of those little tails so they get tucked in. I crochet relatively tightly, I suppose. So I know these little guys aren't going to come out. Um, if you have trouble with your tails coming out, it could be that you have looser tension than me, or maybe your yarn's a little slipperier. So you can just cut yourself longer tails and weave them in back and forth and they won't come out. But mine are definitely not going to go anywhere. So there we go. All tucked in. So that is the start of my next color and it's row three. Join with a slip stitch, chain two, half double crochet in the same place because I'm not counting the chain two and now I'm just going to half double crochet as normal in each stitch all the way down. Chain two, turn half double crochet all the way back and that'll be stripe number two complete. All right, let's talk row count. For children, I recommend 28 rows in total, whether you are striping it um, or not. And for adults, I recommend 32 rows. For adults, large or maybe even extra large legs. So your target measurement um, width wise is going to be around 14 inches um, wide for the adult small medium, that's my legs. Um, if you want them to be wider, then same number of, of chains, of course, but you can make it um, four more rows wider. So 36 rows, and that will give you about 15 and a half inches of circumference. Or if you want them even wider because you, you just want a really extra sort of slouchy looking leg warmer, you can go as many rows as you want to. But like I said, make sure you write it down so you make number two the same. And keep in mind that these are going to get a little bit bigger with wear. And if you're washing them, it will also kind of loosen up the stitches a little bit. So they, they will get um, a little looser with wear. So um, if they're a little bit tight on you when you first make them, that's fine. If you have issues with leg warmers slouching down your legs and you want them to stay up, you can do several things. You can tie a little ribbon around the top edge and tie them into bows. You can use yarn. You can use um, like little braided cord or something, or you can even stitch in a little bit of sewing elastic around the top. And much like a sock, it'll help keep them up. Um, I like, I've seen and made tutorial um, leg warmers that have a little bit of ribbing at the top and bottom. Goodness me. Patricia, thank you. Thank you for picking up a pattern. Uh, but I find that the ribbing also, even on knit or, or crocheted leg warmers, tends to stretch out over time. So um, a, an actual like cinching tie, like a drawstring, or a little bit of sewing elastic is the best way to keep a pair of leg warmers uh, up on your legs without them feeling uncomfortable. I'm going to read out a question from Maria here sure. who asks, instead of snipping the yarn, could you potentially carry the non-working yarn. Yep, I just covered that. Um, so if you don't want to snip your yarns, you can just, if you're doing um, two rows per color, you'll always end up changing color at the same place up top. So you can just carry it across, but you are going to end up 
with um, like a little bit of yarn carrying across the two colors. If you want to add um, a little bit of fun edging or novelty yarn or something at the top, you would just work over top of that carried yarn and you won't see it. Um, otherwise, it'll stay on the inside of the leg warmer and you won't see it anyway when you've got them on. But I just like my leg warmers to look the same on the inside as they do the outside. So I'm snipping my yarn with each color change, but you don't have to if you're making even numbered rows. If you were making um, three row wide stripes, thank you Kathleen, thank you so much for picking up a pattern, um, then you're going to find that you're changing colors at opposite ends. So if you want to carry your colors, you have to make your stripes an even number, like two or four. Uh, but you will have a little carried bit of yarn there. Not a big deal, but just something that I'm opting to not bother with. Chain two at the end of the row, turn, skip the chain two, it's not counting as a stitch. Make sure you double crochet or half double crochet into that first stitch and half double crochet all the way back. Good question though. I'm gonna have a little sip of my coffee here. Yep, these are already looking very Christmassy. Red and green, classic. Crocus suggests having clear plastic elastic. Yep, if you can get your hands on some of that. Um, you would just want to sort of stitch it in. You don't have to stitch it in with a sewing machine. You can just stitch it in with a running hand basting stitch uh, using thread or embroidery floss or whatever you've got lying around. Um, and just make sure you're cutting a length of elastic that fits uh, a little a little snugly around say just underneath your knee but not tightly because it you don't want it to be uncomfortable you just want it to stay up over top of your calf muscle oh i like that lucy red and white stripes and you have candy cane legs yes that would be so cute i might make a second pair with that i thought i was making this one to match my elf hat um we made an elf hat uh, we'll link that tutorial down below too. Um, and it's in red and green stripes and I wanted these to actually match my elf hat. <laughs> Kimberly! Kimberly, thank you so much! Kimberly's just picked up a pattern at her Etsy shop too. Thank you, Kimberly. Carrie's just popping in. Carrie, if you're uh, just anybody who's just dropping in now, um, I've chained 44 for children or 54 for adults to begin. A custom measurement would be any number that fits between your knee and ankle. That's the measurement between your knee and ankle. You would chain a length that without stretching reaches between knee and ankle and then add an extra two chains for turning. And then you're going to crochet until it wraps comfortably, even snugly around your leg. I recommend 28 rows for children, 32 rows for adult small medium leg, and 36 rows for adult large or extra large, or a custom number. You can use thicker yarn if you want. If you're trying to use up skinnier weight yarn, like a lightweight or even a super lightweight, you might want to change your hook size to be smaller, and that will change the number of chains, it'll change the number of rows, but the same pattern basically uh, continues. Um, you can make your foundation chain any number that you need so that it fits between your knee and your ankle. If you wanted them really long, then you can make them longer. If you wanted them shorter, you could make them shorter. So very flexible pattern. I'm just snipping my green, fastening off nice and tight. That's row number four complete, stripe number two complete. I'm going to turn and I'm going to add in my red again. Now, like I just said, if you wanted to carry your colors, you certainly could. Um, it will just show a little bit at the top as you carry them, but you are more than welcome to do that. It does kind of save on yarn and it makes it a little bit quicker. Could you repeat the details of the uh, pattern for every uh, all the latecomers? I just did. So for so the hook size? Oh yeah, hook size. Yarn size. I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook and I'm using medium size four weight yarn. You want around 200 yards total for adults, maybe 140 yards total for children. Um, and like I said, you can change up the yarn if you want. You don't have to necessarily uh, use the size four medium weight. 
You can use any fiber you want. I happen to be using acrylic. Um, oops, looks like that one went a little lower than it should have. Um, you can use any, uh, any fiber you want and you can change up the thickness of the yarn. Um, you just may end up having to change up your hook size to get a nice, I'm not going to say tight, but you'll notice that because we're using the half double crochet stitch, you're not really seeing any spaces in between my stitches and um, it's not a big holy kind of uh, fabric. So because they're leg warmers, you want them to be warm. That's why we're using the half double crochet stitch. But if you use a hook that's too, too big for the yarn thickness, you'll end up with spaces in between your stitches. So you want to avoid that. So you're going to use the hook that best suits your tension and the yarn you've chosen. Nico, thank you so much for gifting a membership, Nico. Let's see here. Wraith has won it. Hey, congratulations. Welcome back, Wraith. Every row will have the same number of stitches. If you're using um, my foundation chain measurements, it'll be 42 stitches for children, 52 stitches for adults. Um, did I say that right? 42 and 52. 42 stitches for children, 52 stitches for adults, um, or your original foundation chain number if you're making a custom number. And you'll always have the same number of stitches in each row. So there's no increasing or decreasing in this pattern. And I have, I think, pretty much explained the tutorial. Like I said, we have an original tutorial on this. So if you want to see a more succinct version of it um, down the road, we'll link it down below at the end of the tutorial today. And um, it's exactly what I'm doing here. It's just that I made the original set in black and white. I'm going to speed up a little now uh, because I feel nice and limbered up. And I want to see how far I can get. I was hoping to, I definitely want to make at least one leg warmer today. I'm hoping that I might even be able to get the second one done, but I don't know. I've been kind of taking my time here, so we'll see how far I get. All right, so this is a very simple pattern. So I'm going to engage a little bit more here with the chat, I hope. Chain two, turn. Don't include the chain twos as a stitch and half double crochet in each stitch all the way back. So some of you have already gotten snow, I'm seeing. Looks like winter is trying to make its presence known. I don't feel like I've done with fall yet, so winter can stay away for a little while longer. So I see a question here. Uh, Holly says, Jade, have you ever worked this leg warmer by using only the back loop like the pumpkin pattern? Yes, so that is a ribbed stitch. You could totally do that, but then you might want to work fewer rows because that is going to be a stretchier fabric. You'll get an interesting sort of ribbed effect, like, um, like you're wearing sort of a, a ribbed cuff all the way up and down your leg, which is totally fine, but that is a stretchier fabric. So you you may want to include some sewing elastic around the top or some drawstrings for sure if you do that, because they will stretch out much faster and want to sort of slink down your legs. Um, but you can totally do that if you want. Welcome everybody who's just landing here. Um, Mary says, can you use size six yarn for the leg warmers? That is super bulky yarn. Yes, you can certainly use it. You will uh, have fewer rows because super bulky crochets up a lot faster and you probably need fewer stitches to start. They are going to end up being very thick though. So this is like a fairly nice thin material, but if you want something much, much thicker, then you can definitely use the bulky weight yarn you're probably going to want to use a bigger hook, maybe an eight millimeter, uh, also known as an L or an 11. Um, and then you would definitely want to go with the whole custom measurement thing. So take your tape measure, measure from knee to ankle and chain a foundation length that covers that. Uh, with the bulky weight yarn, it'll be fewer uh, than with the medium weight yarn that I'm using. <clears throat> and you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, 
That's one more. That's the <clears throat> third stripe finished. And I'm going to snip my yarn. Like now, if I was going to carry my yarn, um, you'll see, see how wide this is. This is sort of what it would look like. You would see this little bit of string passing across the stripe. So the red would be as wide as the green stripe. And then I would have a green length across the red stripe and so on. So you're going to end up with like a little bit of carry back here. And you want to make sure that you don't make the first stitch with the new color too tight. Otherwise you'll end up sort of cinching the top together. Um, so I don't really want that look inside my leg warmers, which is why I'm changing yarn, but it absolutely doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. And like I said, you don't have to uh, change color every other row either. If you were using a self-striping yarn, you can just do whatever you want. Um, it's a very, very uh, forgiving pattern. Let me make sure that I'm not, so chaining two, and double, half double crochet into the same stitch to start, and off I go. Working over top of my little tails. Sounds like there's a cold snap going all through the entire continent. Yes. Even as far down as Texas is seeing cold temperatures. Interesting. It is. I wonder where that came from. I thought it was just us polar bear Canadians that experienced cold. <laughs> I like the half double crochet stitch. I feel like it's a speedy stitch when I'm doing this kind of, of work. Bobby asks, do these slouch? Well, like a sock, you can sort of stuff them, sort of uh, shove them down your leg to get a slouchy look. If you want a slouchier look, you can make them longer. So make a longer foundation chain to begin with, something that maybe goes past your knee. Um, and then you can sort of stuff them down. If you don't want them to fall off the bottom of your foot, but you want them to be a little on the wider side, then you can consider putting a little bit of uh, sewing elastic around the bottom edge uh, or even a little um, sort of cinching drawstring. You can weave that in and out around the, the bottom as well and just sort of tie them with a little bow and that will help keep them from wanting to fall down off of your foot if you're making them extra wide or if you want to sort of have them shoved down and be kind of slouchy. Uh, because we're using the half double crochet stitch you could weave a drawstring in and out along the top edge row. So you sort of see where there's like natural spaces in between the stitches. You can weave one in and out up there. Um, and so that's if you don't, you're not comfortable kind of um, sewing in a, a sewing elastic. That's always an option. Forty-two. So I've still got the right number of stitches. Uh, sorry, that should be, wait. Forty-two for children, fifty-two for adults. Let me double check. Why am I losing stitches or am I just not counting right? No, nope, fifty-two. I just counted incorrectly. Hello, pal. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. It's always good when you are crocheting back and forth, one stitch per stitch like this in rows. 
it's tempting to just keep kind of going and going and getting faster and faster, but it really is a good idea to stop and count every so often, uh, even if things look even, just to make sure you're not missing the odd stitch. Because over time, if you miss a stitch, say in row four, and then maybe you miss another stitch in row six, and then maybe you miss another stitch in row 10, by the time you get to row 11, you're down three stitches. Uh, so it's good to just stop and double check every so often. I will be completing my eighth row and my fourth stripe, and my target row count is 32, so I will be uh, one quarter of the way there. Even a cold snap in South Africa, really? Yeah, okay, so maybe <laughs> maybe the planet got a cold. <laughs> Big thank you to everybody who is spending some time with us today. We really appreciate the company and uh, we're really glad to know you're enjoying these live streams. I like live crochet alongs, they're a lot of fun. And uh, they're kind of a neat way to, to you know, work on old tutorials or to sort of revisit them. Oh my gosh, it's snowing. It's snowing. I'm, lo I'm looking at snowflakes. You're kidding. First snow of the year. Oh yeah, it is. On the 30th of October. All right, I'm, I'm going to sip my coffee with that. Just a little flurry. My goodness. It's too soon. It's, it's not, not. It's too soon. Not yet. I, I'm not ready to be done with, <laughs> I'm not ready to be done with fall yet. But there it is. Nothing that's going to accumulate. The squirrels are going to go crazy oh, now. The poor squirrels are going to freak right out. So I am one quarter done, my first leg warmer. I'll probably get one leg warmer done today, with any luck. It's getting heavier, look at that. Yes, look oh at that. Oh my goodness, we've got official snow flurries. Well, I'm not sure That's how I it. feel about that. we're moving. <laughs> That's it, I'm moving to Florida. We're moving to Florida. Is there <laughs> anyone, do we have any viewers in Florida that'll um, put us up? Yeah, that'll put us up for a, place? a couple days until we find a spot. <laughs> <laughs> I might add jingle bells to, oh my gosh, you know what I'm gonna do guys? I'm gonna create little drawstring, drawstrings that I can weave in and out of the top so that I can tie them together and have really cute bows hanging down my leg and I'm gonna put bells on the end of them so that it matches my, my uh, the little jingle bell on the top of my, my elf cap. Cause that's why I'm making these. I'm making them to match my elf hat so I can sort of stay cozy and warm and look festive while I, I sort of plunk around the house this holiday season. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to add jingle bells and drawstrings. <laughs> Everyone's inviting us to their state. So we have a lot of states to choose from. As long as they're warm states, because we grew up in Canada, so a change would be nice. Trina says, Hiya, is the leg warmers inspired by Dennis the Menace? I don't know. Does someone wear leg warmers in Dennis the Menace? I'm, I, I remember that comic strip from when I was a little kid, but I don't remember anybody wearing leg warmers. Snowflake appliques. That's a nice idea, Lucy. Mandy says, I'm glad we're all together for this first snowfall, and I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> to be fair, we're just we're just teasing. Um, it's supposed to go back up to like 11 or yeah. 12. Uh, it's going to warm up again. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go back up. So I think this is just a little snap. It kind of does this.
Desert Rose says, not Florida. How about Arizona? Sure. Is dry and warm? I'm in. Yeah, you like that. I would love dry and warm. <laughs> Sylvia says, come to SoCal. I don't think we can afford California. No. Don't you have to be like a multimillionaire to live there? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some tiny little super tiny apartment. Or is that just like places like uh, San Francisco that's expensive? Like is it the, the whole area. state or just like like some parts? Myrtle Beach? Yes, we're familiar with Myrtle Beach. That's in the Carolinas, right? Yeah, South Carolina. Is it warm there most of the time? I would say probably. Texas has a freeze warning tomorrow. Oh my gosh. That is interesting. Mela has invited us to Wisconsin. But it's Wisconsin is also kind of, I think that's similar weather to what we get. I think so. It's like pretty much equal for four seasons, I believe. I'm leaning towards Arizona from what I'm reading here in the chat. 52. So I still have 52 stitches, so I haven't lost any, haven't gained any. You're leaning towards it. Where'd you say Arizona? Arizona. Because it's warm and dry. Warm and dry. Because Florida's warm, but it can get really uh, humid, yes. I think. And you can also get blown away by hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> well, some hurricane will blow us right back into Canada. Yeah. And we'll be like, no. <laughs> Nevada? Yeah, Nevada, that might be a little too hot for us. I visited... Vegas? Uh, I Isn't visited, that like the desert, basically? Yeah, I visited Vegas when I was... Uh, I have friends, uh, family friends in Vegas, and we visited them when I was 16 in August, which I realize is probably not the best time to go into the desert. Um, and I was honestly oh. amazed at how absolutely unbelievably hot it could get <laughs> so kim says that arizona is good for arthritis is that because it's warm and dry mm, that's does, good to know does dryness have something to do with it i don't i don't know i'm gonna put you in a little package and ship you over there <laughs> to arizona as long as i have my hooks handle with, with care <laughs> <laughs> fragile fragile yes <laughs> So just a reminder, um, if you're popping in now a uh, to make vertical stripe leg warmers for kids, <laughs> I recommend chaining 44. For adults, I recommend chaining 54 or a, a chain length that is uh, stretches between your knee and your ankle, and then add two extra little chains for turning. Uh, we don't count the turning chains as a stitch in this pattern. We're just half double crocheting in every single stitch. So every row will have 42 stitches for kids, 50, 42, sorry, 42 stitches for kids, 52 stitches for adults, or your custom number. Every row has the same number of stitches. Chain two, turn at the end of every row. Don't treat the turning chains as a stitch. And I'm changing color every two rows to get this nice vertical striped effect. I recommend 28 rows for kids, 32 rows for adult, small, medium, 36 rows for adult, large or extra large, or as many rows as you like in order to get a piece of fabric that wraps comfortably around your leg. And if you're making it a custom number, make sure you write all that stuff down. So the number of chains you use, the number of rows you make, just so you can make number two identical without really having to think about it. And I'm doing two rows of color for every stripe. You can do as many rows as you like for a stripe width of your choosing, or if you're using self-striping yarn, just chain two, turn, half double crochet in every stitch, every single row, no need to change colors. Uh, a lot. You can also just make them solid color too. That is also okay. So uh, my dear wife, did yes. you leave me any coffee? I may have. Are we going to have to take this outside? <laughs> 
You can. You can take it outside with the snow if you want. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it out on the squirrels. <laughs> They'll teach me a lesson, though. They'll tell you we'll, what's we'll up. throw peanut shells at me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it sounds like Arizona can reach uh, extreme highs and lows, so triple digits. And then also it can get cold. Wow, well... I guess it's that's the desert, right? It, is it the desert? I think so. My Parts knowledge of, of a lot of American geography is limited. Crocus says, if you have arthritis, don't go to Vancouver in the winter. Yeah, that's probably because it's extremely damp and cold. Like, it's not, it's not freezing, but it's cold and very rainy. Um, I'm going to guess that most places in this country the aren't majority of great Canada is in like the winter. That. I mean, because winter is pretty much like how much winter do you want? Is the question you ask. <laughs> You're going to get winter in this country. How much of it do you we want? We need to live on the equator. Yeah. Somewhere around the equator, maybe just off the equator. That would be South America, South America, and. Uh, Parts of Africa, I think. I think Italy's pretty close to the equator, is it isn't it? Close, yeah. They get winters, but they're pretty gentle, unless you're in the north. Yeah, Sicily gets pretty gentle winters. Mm-hmm. All right, changing colors again. Making sure I work over top of my little short tails. <clears throat> So you're going with a Christmas theme. Nice. Yeah, I thought that might be kind of fun. Um, so it would match my, my uh, elf hat. The original ones Jada made are black and white. Yeah, which are kind of fun for Halloween. On them. Are the stars included in the... In the written pattern? The written pattern? Yes, they are. Are they in the video tutorial? Um, I think we, we link to that tutorial. Oh, yes. Link to separate tutorial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's like nine years ago, so it's hard to remember. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's. Oh, uh, we have a birthday girl! Ooh. Happy birthday, Teresa! Happy birthday, Teresa! Happy birthday to anybody who's got a birthday this week! Nico! Nico has just gifted a membership! Thank you, Nico! What a sweet thing to do! And Paula has won it. Congratulations, Paula, and welcome back. Jada Stitches is a great place to celebrate your birthday. We have birthday cake emojis. <laughs> we have birthday animations. We've got fun craft projects. We have fun crafting projects. Wonderful community. Amazing community. It's a um, place to hang What was out. that from Nico? Nico's constantly surprising us. <laughs> was that a, a, a milestone? No, that's a, gift? it's a gifted membership. All right. Nico is considering moving back to the U.S. Aha. Uh -huh. That is cool. I think we, uh, it's, 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 um, it's kind of fun to hear people's moving stories. I know that <laughs> not all of them are great. I love hearing moving stories. I love if hearing moving stories. If you have a good stories. moving story, put it in the chat. Yeah. I, I love, um, I love he hearing people's experiences. I also like to know why people moved. Yeah, like, did you move if, for you know, family? Did you move for excitement? Did you move for some fun? People... Did you move for work? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Why did you move? And... Um... And why did you move to where you went? So you've got people that go literally down the street. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got people that move around their country. And then you have people that leave the country. It's uh, interesting. Interesting stories and reasons why. Uh, Joanna asked if we forgot about the poll. Did you put up a poll, Mr. and Stitches? Uh, yes. I have a poll up. I did not forget about it. But I can close it down if everyone's curious. What is the poll? I'm going to send it over to Jada. Here we go. 
Have you seen our recent video tutorial, the Jacob Ladder Scarf? Oh, good question. Yes, 61%, no, 38. Well, there you go. We're uh, always curious to see who's getting shown what. Uh, I would like to take a moment, just remind people, um, probably everybody here already knows this, but just in case, you know, you see it in the comments or you hear somebody kind of complaining about not being able to see stuff from people they're subscribed to, uh, remember to check your YouTube subscription feed and not just your YouTube home feed. So when you log into or arrive at home, um, open up the YouTube app, you are defaulted to your home feed and YouTube just hands you any old thing up there, stuff from people you've never watched, stuff from people you've watched in the past. Um, it's not necessarily brand new stuff and it's certainly not necessarily in chronological order. Um, so if you want to see the things, any new videos or posts from people that you actually are subscribed to, you have to go to your subscription feed. And typically you'll see subscriptions on the side, the right side, or I should say the left side of your uh, um, computer screen if you're on a computer or a laptop and it's at the bottom if you're on the tablet or the phone uh, it'll say you know home subscriptions a couple other things down there but the subscription feed is where you'll find all of the videos in chronological order from everyone you're actually subscribed to so if you feel like you might be missing out or you think I'm pretty sure somebody I watched should have put up a video uh, before now you'll probably find it there um, and I just I know a lot of people don't know that that's a thing so just like take the opportunity to mention it. Changing colors again. Back to green. Shout out to all the lurkers out there. Hey lurkers. Hi lurkers. Oh my gosh, Joyce. Hey, our first super chat of the day. Thank you, Joyce. Oh, and this is Joyce's first super on a live stream. Is Thank that a super so chat or a super sticker? It's a super chat. Joyce okay, says, I see. They've, YouTube has added a new little celebration uh, sticker. Yeah, there. I like that. Joyce says, snow, wow, it's 78 degrees in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Come to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Gee, that sounds good. Um, 78 degrees is about what, 20, 26, 27? I think 78 is roughly like the, the 20s. In the 20s. Low 20s, that sounds 20s. Nice. So it's perfect. It's perfect, in other words, yeah, okay. <laughs> Actually, when you start getting into the mid-20s, it's getting a bit too hot. For you. <laughs> 19. I, 18, I like it 19, a little warmer than, than the Mr. Is does. It's nice. Yeah, the Mr. likes it cooler. <laughs> Mr. runs hot. Jada's like a lizard. Yeah. She wants to be on like a burning hot scolding rock. Yeah, literally stretched out. You'd be happy in the desert on a rock. I will say, I was, like I said, when I was 16 <laughs> and I got to go to Vegas, I was stunned at how hot it got, but I wasn't complaining. <laughs> 25.5 so perfect that's a perfect temperature for me I like that all right mr. and stitches I see some moving stories uh, coming in do you want to read from some of them Maria, we got one from Maria let's see what Maria says we moved from Arizona to I believe that's Pennsylvania PA yeah at the beginning of the pandemic, my husband's job moved permanently Ooh. to Pennsylvania. It was weird, scary driving across the United States. It was like driving through a huge ghost town. Oh, weird. Yeah, well, that was uh, some strange times. Yep. Humanity lost its mind. Yeah, I think it did. Yep. Human civilization lost its mind. But <laughs> hey. I think a lot of people moved during the pandemic. Um, Yes, there were li literally millions of people moved during that time. Um, but um, Arizona to Pennsylvania, yeah, that's that's pretty far. Wow. Uh, Miss Jer Jersey says, so I moved from one end of Denmark to the other, approximately 350 kilometers. Wow. My parents made the move and I was preg pregnant, so I made my, my then husband make the move with me. <laughs> 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 okay that's pretty far yeah just i think like leaving leaving the town that you are currently living in and moving you know elsewhere is a big deal but i mean man when you like move right across the country that's huge <laughs> trina says still staying in eastbourne 
but landlord wants to come back from overseas and claim the flat back just waiting for an appropriate place to move to flat is full of boxes mm. Mm. So yeah so you need to find a place move incoming you are in the process Sylvia says, I moved from Santa Fe to New Mexico for love. Aw. Oh, I well, like that's that. That's a nice story. That's a nice story. That's exciting. Those are both warm places, are they not? Santa Fe and New Mexico? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Brittany says, I moved to Nebraska for college. Oh. I'm a third generation electrical engineer from UNL, University of Newfoundland? <laughs> you have to tell me what UNL is. Or of, um, yeah, I don't know. Once my husband and I get our PhDs, we plan on moving to Arizona or New Mexico. Okay. Cool. Debbie says, we moved 600 miles from Los Angeles to Redding, then 500 miles back to Bakersfield because jobs, jobs were hard to find. Oh, wow. Marie says, I moved into my townhouse. I moved about five miles away from the last place I lived. And in a few years, I hope to move to South Carolina and be with my family. Well, we have all kinds of moving stories in here. Nice. I know. I almost... University of Nebraska at Lincoln. At That's Lincoln. That's what UNL is. Oh, okay. University of Nebraska at Lincoln. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, the University of Newfoundland is Memorial. So you'll see like that. So if you, that, that's, that's, I think they've only got the one too in St. John's Memorial. Dowlin, Dowlin, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. When my daughter was five, she's now 23, we moved from Idaho to Kentucky. We drove straight through. It was crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Idaho to Kentucky. Idaho if to we move, Kentucky. we have to bring the squirrels, says Vivi. <laughs> yes, we'll trap all the squirrels. Aww. And they're coming with us. Summer says, we bought our house when we did because Jordan's dad screwed us over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, not, not every single time we move, like we, we move as a collective is because of a good reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We don't always I'm want waiting, to move. This is from Trina. I'm waiting for the right time to move back to Australia from England. Okay. I would wow. say uh, move now because you'll be going into into late spring and that would be a lovely time to arrive back home in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Dragon Cat moved from Ontario to West Germany. Oh, wow. And then British Columbia. Oh, my and gosh. And now I'm in Ontario again. That is a lot of ping husband was military. Well, uh, that, makes, that makes sense. That explains that. Yeah. Lots of moving around. Yep. Yeah, the military just puts you all over the place. Well, I'm going to put up another poll and yeah. see what people what people in the chat like. Are you going to invent one? I'm going to make one up right now. Okie dokie. I'm going to finish this stripe and then take stock of where I'm at. I will definitely be doing leg warmer number two on my own off camera because this is taking... A little longer than I anticipated, but uh, that's okay. I think I'm a little over halfway done, but we will find out in a moment. <clears throat> Another reason that I like doing two rows per color for these vertical stripes is that it makes counting a lot faster.
last stitch for that row. Okay, where am I at? Let's see. <clears throat> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I am a little over halfway done because I am aiming for 32 rows. And so far, I'm almost, I'm at about seven and a half inches wide or almost 20 centimeters. And my target width is about 14 inches. So I am a little over half, uh, maybe 35 and a half centimeters. So that is the target. I will pause and have a sip of coffee. Gray Beard says, I drove a big truck for 20 some years and me and the snow are not friends, but I did get to see lots of the country. Yes, yes, that is definitely, if you wanna, if you wanna travel, <laughs> then being a truck driver is a great way to see the country. Actually, it's a great way to see North America because truck drivers end up kind of going cross border all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, joining my green again. And I will half double crochet over top of my little tails. <clears throat> Makes for a much neater project. Hey, the snow's picking up. Is it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it is. What is going on? Ew. It is too early. I'm not interested. We had a, a question from Vima about yes. the project. Hi, I Vima. Think. Vima's crochet. Jada, can you show how to make the zigzag way of the Jacob's ladder how you had done on the blanket? Yes, <clears throat> I will definitely do a little tutorial on that. Um, it's a little more involved than just the straight regular Jacob's Ladder. Um, so I wanted to start with the the regular one in a scarf format since that's nice and simple, but uh, definitely I will uh, do a tutorial on that zigzagging one because that's a lot of fun. I know it's it, it kind of isn't exactly, it's technically still like the same concept as the Jacob's Ladder, but I don't know if you can call it Jacob's Ladder when it sort of zigzags over the place because ladders don't really do that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's a fun that's a fun pattern too. Wow, it really is picking up out there. I'm not impressed. Go away, snow. Still fall. This will be row 20 I am completing. And then that leaves me with 12 more rows to go or six more stripes. So slowly getting there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna see if I can crochet a little quicker. We've been doing a little bit of uh, mild research, checking out the temperature of uh, the uh, country here and we've learned that Alberta is seeing record number immigration. Alberta uh, immigration and emigration. Um, so it's uh, the surrounding Calgary. I think it's Calgary, Edmonton and surrounding area. So that's interesting. Alberta. Alberta. Come and for the Alberta, work. Like it's it's got some pretty areas, but it's not warm. No, like, come for the work, but leave for the weather. <laughs> like it gets, it gets, it can get down to like minus what thirty or forty without much trouble. Didn't Calgary already get twenty centimeters of snow? I think I think north of Calgary they got snow already. Yeah. yeah, like like serious snow. And then Edmonton is way even further north than that. So we're just getting a little, a little yeah. squeeze. We should of probably snow. stop complaining. We're getting a squirrel-sized <laughs> version of snow here. 
It's not accumulating. It's, it's just not gonna. It's not gonna accumulate. It's but just hitting what? the ground and melting. It does look pretty. It looks very pretty. I, I, I should have set up the camera so everyone could see it. It's. Uh, it is pretty. <laughs> um, and it's not accumulating. It's just hitting the ground and melting. But yeah, it's it's like the it's like wet flurries. It's we won't get snow here. We don't get snow come and stay until like maybe January. Like it maybe it'll land and it'll kind of accumulate, but then it's kind of gone the next day by lunch. It has to sort of get cold and stay cold before it, it comes and stays. Okay, so let's see how many votes. We got 109 votes on the poll. Let's get a few more, and then I will send it over to Jada. I'm going to call on all lurkers. <laughs> I want all the lurkers to get in on this poll. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 12 more rows to go, six more stripes. And that'll be leg warmer number one complete. Really easy to seam up if you are uh, kind of zipping along a little faster than me or you're making fewer rows. You just want, you can sew it up if you want, but I'm gonna just slip stitch my seam shut. So you bring your long edges together and just slip stitch through each set of stitches. And that's easy peasy. And then you turn it right sides out. And that's essentially a finished leg warmer, but of course you can decorate it. You can add trim, you can add elastic, a drawstring. I'm gonna put in a little drawstring and add ribbons or add bells to it. Cause I think that would just be so cute. Okay. Four, where would you prefer to live for weather? A four seasons, 73%. Warm or hot only, 24%. Cold, rainy, or damp often, 0%. Perpetual winter, 0%. Really? There's nobody who Am wants I the perpetual only one winter? That voted for perpetual winter? Hey, it went, it went zero to zero. It actually had some votes earlier. Oh, really? Yeah. So people switched their votes up. I get Maybe that. Maybe they switched right at the last second. It's the lurkers. The lurkers did it. I, I think four perfectly balanced seasons is, it would be wonderful. Like, you know, four actual months, or I should say three actual months of each of the four seasons. I think that would be wonderful. Um, it's just that typically we tend to get like six to eight months of winter. <laughs> I think something's a little wonky with the with the chat or the poll system right now. Oh, really? Because there were some votes for the last two. It wasn't zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was a few percentage points. But anyway, that's interesting. Most people want four seasons. Yeah, I could so totally So you would see sacrifice that. warm, like consistently warm, like a California style southern florida for fall fall winter that's interesting well the spring is so wonderful and the fall is so beautiful that is true um that that's i true. i you know but you don't really get to have those or appreciate them unless it gets nice and cold for winter and really hot for the summer so it's a it's a balance it's just it's always a balance um i like i said i would love just even three months of each i think that would be lovely um, i can handle three months of snow and ice but, you know, that's it. I don't want six to eight. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question. Would you prefer, would you take the, you know, the snow, cold snow of certain parts of Canada, like Ontario, over the cold dampness, but you don't get snow like Vancouver or England? I think parts of England do get snow. Um so Vancouver then. I know Scotland gets snow. I don't know. I think you'd, I, I'd have to live there for a few years to kind of get a feel for it. I guess that's anywhere. Um, I, I, if it's going to get cold, then I want it to snow at least because okay. I, 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 I like to play in the snow. Like I do like to go skiing. I like to go walking through the snow. Um, and I think the snow is beautiful. And then on a sunny day, it just makes everything super bright. Like I really like how super bright it gets. Um, so if it's gonna get super cold, I'd at least like it to, you know, blanket the place with snow. 
Um, cause then I feel like there's a reason for it being that cold. <laughs> Slowly getting there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. 22 rows complete. I've got 10 more rows to go. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us while we make one of these live. I will definitely be making the second one um, later off camera, but uh, it's nice to get them both. It'll be nice to have a, a, a cozy pair to wear around the house as the festive Steven season shows up. And uh, like I said, we've got a tutorial for this. So if you want a quicker, more succinct look at the pattern and how it comes together, then you can check out the tutorial. I like the, the half double crochet stitch. I feel like once I really get into the rhythm of it, I can <clears throat> zip along. Just thinking that um, <clears throat> this in cotton would make a really cute placemat. <laughs> Just love the evenness of stripes. Nice simple pattern. Sometimes the simplest things are the the best to make, especially if you don't know what else to do. <clears throat> um, leg warmers are a nice little make-ahead stash gift for the young and the young at heart. Um, and like I said, if you live in a cold spot, then leg warmers are a nice thing to be able to pull on when it's particularly cold. Taz said she moves from Hawaii to Canada. Oh my gosh. I think your average Canadian would prefer to go in the opposite direction. From Hawaii to Canada? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> I heard Hawaii is very expensive. Yes, I have heard that. But so is Canada. Canada is terribly expensive. Yeah. Yes. I want to know why. Yeah, people, <laughs> people don't realize how expensive it is here until they get here and then they are sometimes very surprised and then they get angry and leave yeah then they get angry and leave. yeah we have a lot of people come and then leave which is sort of sad <laughs> all right ticking along here back to red making sure i work over top of my little tails it makes a very nice neat finish
Sanichton? Taz moved to Sanichton, Canada. Sanich I don't know. I've never heard of Sanichton. No. From Hawaii. Where where you is You have to let us know why you left Hawaii and came to Canada. And, and where is San Sanichton and are we saying it properly? Yeah, could that be San Sanichton? Never heard of that. No. Town. <clears throat> Julia says, I got in late. Are you using half doubles or doubles? We're using the half double crochet stitch uh, so that we can have a sort of an, it grows <laughs> faster than single crochet, but it's a little bit less spacey or holy than a double crochet stitch. So it's a bit of a warmer leg warmer. And we do have an original tutorial for this, which will be linked below. Um, you can vary up the length, you can vary up the width. Very, very easy, very forgiving pattern. So if you need a pair of leg warmers, this is a fun one to try. And you also don't have to change colors every couple of rows. You can make your stripes skinnier or wider by varying up the number of rows in that color you do. Or you can just skip changing colors altogether, make them a solid color, or you can just use self-striping yarn and let the self-striping yarn stripe your leg warmers for you. All are perfectly awesome options. Sanichton is in BC. Sanichton is in BC, says Joanna. Sanichton. Am I saying it right? Vancouver Island. Oh, it's on Vancouver Island. Oh. Well, that's a lovely spot. That's a beautiful area. So I could see Hawaii to there. Mm -hmm. You're also just Not sort of crossing far. over the Pacific. Not too far. You don't get um, you don't get super cold winters. <laughs> Kelly wants to know, Jada, how do you keep your edges so even? Um, I think a lot of that has to do with tension, but more importantly, it's making sure that you always have the same number of stitches in every row. Um, so for example, I have 52 stitches in every row, and then when I chain two and turn, I'm not using the chain two um, consistently as a stitch. So uh, if you are using the chain two as a stitch in, say, some patterns that call for that, then you want to make sure that you consistently use the chain two as a stitch. In this pattern, we don't use the chain two as a stitch, so consistently do not use the chain two as a stitch. Uh, and then that makes basically just means that everything will end up being the same out either side. Um, so consistency, consistency in stitch count, consistency in, in a little bit of tension. And you'll probably see me over the course of this um, crochet project, um, pausing, putting my hook down and sort of like like I just like right now, I kind of just sort of stretching everything out to just kind of keep, it's almost like doing a little bit of blocking or forming as you go. Um, and that just kind of makes sure that you don't end up with any crushed stitches that maybe you miss one. Um, it just kind of gives you a chance to take a look at it and see how things look as you work. I think this is looking pretty even. I'm gonna change colors again. I'll fasten off and flip. working over top of those two little tails and I'm getting pretty close to my 32 row target here. I'll take a second and I'll count up my rows. Just working over top of that tail, pull it back. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. This is 27. Yep, a few more rows left to go. Mm -hmm. 
So Catherine asks, I can't understand why your shops don't have the VAT, which is I, I understand is the European tax, added to the label price instead of having to do it at the till. So taxes are different all over the world and in Canada especially, um, we don't include sales tax in the price of things. So nothing is sh nothing posted in Canada, and I think it's probably the same in the U.S. Shows the it's sh when you get a uh, when you pick up anything to purchase it, it shows you the price. It doesn't show you the price plus the taxes, which I think they do in Europe, which is a heck of a lot nicer because you don't have to sit there doing math in your head. But in North America, we see the price of the thing and then the tax is shown separately so that probably we're not angry at the store. We're angry at the government for creating this idiot tax in the first place. <laughs> um, but that's uh, because everybody is taxed differently. Some countries have taxes um, included. Some tax, some countries, in, like Etsy has to abide by tax laws based on the country that it's operating in and it differs right around the planet. So it's doing its best to show you like what the price of an object is in your own currency and then what the tax is on top of that based on the kind of tax you may or may not pay where you are. So um, it's going to, to differ everywhere. But for example, um, we create our listing prices obviously in Canadian currency dollars because that's how we function. Um, and some places pay uh, different pr provincial or federal taxes here. And if you are in a different country and you're logged into Etsy, you will be seeing items in your own, showing in your own currency. So Etsy does the transition or the exchange. Um, so whatever we post in Canadian dollars, you're seeing the equivalent in whatever currency that you operate in. And you're paying in your own currency. Um, and Etsy has sort of bent, I guess they've, they've made it so that you can do that depending on the country you're in. So I, I know that Etsy doesn't necessarily operate in every country, but it operates in a lot of countries. Um, and that's why. So they've got to kind of have some sort of uniform set up for the platform. Um, they can't include, uh, there's no way to sort of show tax showing on an item if you're just browsing. Um, so you, they do all of that at the checkout. Um, so if you're in Europe and you're used to sort of seeing the taxes included in the price um, or next to it, then that might be, it might look a little funny because obviously they're, they're set up using the, the, um, what's commonly done here, which is sort of doing all the taxes, shipping, etc. at the end. This is getting nice and wide. It's funny, a piece of fabric looks so much wider laid flat than it does when it's wrapped around something. <laughs> All right. Changing colors again. Mr. and Stitches, you're being very quiet over there. I'm just reading the chat. I'm also looking at the snow falling. I I'm it's starting to lighten up a bit. Yeah, it's lightening up a little bit. I'm I'm not surprised that we're seeing a little snowfall the day before Halloween. I feel like that's kind of typical. Halloween is like October is such a beautiful month, but by the end it is, you know, getting chilly. And I feel like I've as a kid, I'm pretty sure I went trick or treating in the snow a couple times. Crocus says, I think you should make some snow appliques. That'd be cute on the side, yeah. Yeah, our little snowflake um, applique would, would suit. Maybe we should do that for the next stream. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I, I may or may not add any appliques to this. We've, I put stars on the first one. Uh, snow, mm -hmm. Snowflakes would be really cute, but I want these to match my elf hat. 
So that's why I'm thinking bells and um, drawstrings, maybe even a little, if I have any extra fake fur yarn lying around, I might add a row of that to the top. That might be cute. I'm not sure if I have any left though. I may have used it all up. Nico says she pays us in Lira. That's cool. <laughs> I think um, Alberta doesn't have a provincial sales tax, uh, but they have to pay a federal sales tax on things. All of the provinces are a little bit different uh, here in Canada. So, and even the sales tax per province varies. And some, some, everybody has to pay the federal tax, sales tax. Some provinces, I think all of them except Alberta have a provincial sales tax. And in some provinces, they're listed as separate, and in other provinces, they've blended them together. So it's, it's very complicated, it's complicated and confusing. Yeah. If you're an accountant. Maria says, two more rows to finish a sleeve. I had to grab a new skein. Oh, oh I hate that. <laughs> just, just I've, I've had to dip into an extra ball of yarn for like a single yard or, or even less in the past. And it just irks me to no end because I, I'm like, oh man, like it could have been just perfect. You know, I'm glad I always have the extra ball around, but I like it when I can just make it, you know, just, a, I've got just enough left when I finish a project that I'm basically fastening off with a proper length tail. That's like perfection. Jada, have you ever watched Half Acred Homestead? Half Acred? By Mrs. Bev. Half Acred Homestead. Half Acred Homestead. Um, have you ever watched that one? I don't Jada, so. Jada likes to watch a lot of that homesteading it stuff. Doesn't sound familiar. Gardening and stuff like that. Half acred homestead? No, not not to me Half either. Half acred homestead? No, but um, I might we'll go check it, it out. <laughs> I love watching all of the. I watch a lot of homesteading and farming and gardening YouTube uh, because I'm very interested in all of that stuff. I. Uh... <laughs> Krista says people will travel to Alberta to buy their cars. Yeah, I can totally believe that, Krista. Well, that makes sense, because on a big purchase, that's a huge savings. It's I a massive it's savings. It's trip. Um, yeah, like that's, you know. Yeah, because it's, um, Alberta only has. Federal tax, which federal, is 5%. Like 5%. Yeah. Versus. Well, Ontario uh, thir is 13. Uh, 13, 15. The, uh, the Maritimes policies. are 15. Um, I think, I think Manitoba. Manitoba, Saskatchewan, BC, I think are like somewhere like five, six, seven. I can't quite remember. If anybody out there representing, you can tell us. Um, but yeah, so I would, I would absolutely do that. I would travel all the way to Alberta to buy a car, but then you've got to drive it home. So you got to drive it home. You got to plan for the major road trip. You got to be ready for a serious road trip. Yes. And driving across Canada, I've done it. I've done the drive across Canada and um, it's, it reminds you just how absolutely astronomically large this continent is going from one side to the other. Um, and it's really neat to see the terrain change, but it's very gradual. And there are just stretches of hundreds of kilometers in a row of absolutely nothing, <laughs> especially when you're driving through Ontario. Uh, you leave basically uh, uh, Sudbury and there's just, it's just like tw 12 to 20 hours of trees, rocks, trees, rocks, trees, rocks. <laughs> there's 30, 30 rows. I've got two more rows left and then I will be seaming up my leg warmer. So two rows left, two rows with green and that is it. All right, here we go. Home stretch. Last two rows for this leg warmer.
Quebec is 17%? Really? I know there's also a Quebec, like, there's a specific Quebec tax. Um, is it more? Is it more than Ontario? Coca says, Jada, what was the name of the other yarn, Ontario yarn supplier near Lens Mills? Um, well, uh, it depends on which Lens Mills you're looking at. I know if you're in the Cambridge area, there's Mary Maxim, which is down in Paris. Um, and I know that I think Lens Mills has a an outlet in Cambridge. I haven't been to that one. Um, and then outside in is it Listowell, which is kind of north of Cambridge? There's the, the big Spinrite factory or the Burnett. That's the Burnett factory. And I think they have a, they certainly have a store. I know they do like a, a tent sale there, I think every year. Haven't been to that one yet either, but I know that's sort of out there. Generally all in the same kind of area. Joanne says Lens Mill in Woodstock. Yeah, there's a few Lens Mills. Um, Oh my gosh, Nico. Thank you so much. Nico's gifted a nether membership. Nico, you're such a darling. Thank you. And it looks like Debbie has won it. Congratulations, Debbie, and welcome back. All right. Almost done this row. When you get to the end of your last row, do not fasten off your last row's color. So for me, I was aiming for 32 rows. That'll get me a length of about 14 inches, 35 and a half centimeters or so in width, and that will wrap comfortably around my leg. Um, once you're done your last row, no matter how wide you need your leg warmer to be, all we're gonna do is create a seam. So I'm gonna bring one edge up to the other. I'm gonna chain one, turn my work around here. And now I'm just gonna slip stitch the whole thing shut. So I'm gonna put my hook through the first stitch of the last row and through the corresponding stitch of the foundation chain row and slip stitch. Slip stitching can get tight. So try to remind yourself not to crochet too tightly, maybe pull up a little bit on your loop and then just work your way down the entire leg warmer. Make sure you don't miss any stitches. You'll have the same number of slip stitches in this little seam row as you would the same number of stitches in any row. So for me that'll be 52. It'll be 42 if you're making the child size or your typical number if you're making a custom size. And it's nothing fancy that slip stitching obviously is not going to show if you're using the same color. Um, it'll show a little bit over here. You'll get kind of a neat chain effect, but I'll be flipping mine inside out. So you will not see the seam at all.
Diane asks if I'm on my second leg warmer. Nope, I am only on number one. I had kind of wondered if I could get both of them done in the same live stream, but I definitely overestimated my speed. <laughs> so I will be doing number two later, but they're identical. So once you know how to make one, you can make the second one exactly the same way. And uh, that's kind of the fun in these things. I will, I made mine to match my elf hat. So I will be digging my elf hat out and stomping around the house in this crazy getup. <laughs> I'm also going to dig out my uh, jingle bells later on. I don't have them immediately handy. I'll have to dig them out, but I'm going to create a little drawstring to weave through the top and then I will be attaching jingle bells onto the end of it just so when it's tied up in a little bow and I'm sort of wandering around my little jingle bells will match the little jingle bell on the edge of my elf hat so I think that's kind of fun this is sort of a festive twist on my regular uh, leg warmers which were a little which the original set were black and white which actually would have fit in nicely with uh, with Halloween and I thought I would do something a little more festive instead. And the last pair. Last set of stitches. Slip stitch to join. There we go. Fasten off. You can take a minute to weave your tails in. I know I will. So both my tails are up here. I'm gonna weave them in under the same colored stitches. So green under green, red under red. double back. This is some fairly tight tension so I'm not too worried about my yarn tails coming undone. But if you have slipper yarn or your tails tend to come undone on you then make sure you, we you leave longer tails for weaving in and go back and forth underneath the same stitches eh, three maybe four times. All right, so that is the inside of my leg warmer. Now I'm gonna flip them right side out. There we go. And that is the seam, but of course you can't see the stitching of the seam. And once you start wearing it, it's gonna completely disappear. So right again, this is the seam, but we flipped it right side out. So there's no visible seam, there's no visible stitching. And that is one lovely long vertical leg warmer. Now, I'm going to add a little drawstring across the top and so I can tie it, it'll prove to do two things. One, it'll help keep it up underneath my knee um, because my when I'm running around the house, they will slip. My leg warmers always slide down my leg. Um, so sometimes a little bit of elastic up here or even a little bit down the bottom is nice. But I like that flared thing to sort of sit over top of my slippers or my shoes, whatever I happen to be wearing. Can you um, so I like the, to keep um, them up. Can you hold the pattern closer to the camera so we can try and see the green? Because I can see the green on my screen. Um, some people are saying they see it as black, but it looks green to me. This is an but evergreen. But holding it up closer, I think, helps. It's evergreen, and so I'm using. Yeah, uh, it's like a, it's like a dark green. Yeah, it's evergreen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's better, I, I think. Nice. Good tension. Yeah, nice and nice and stiff. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little drawstring that I will add um, bells to. You can use ribbon, cord, whatever you want, but I'm just going to use my yarn and I'm going to hold both strings together to make kind of like a cute little 
um, drawstring that uses both colors and it'll be a little stronger. I'll leave a little bit of tail so that I can turn, I can sort of tie a bell onto the end. And let me think, I'm just going to chain, I'm going to chain a little on the looser side because I'm using the same hook and I'm using two strands held together so I don't want to make it too tight. So I'm giving my hook a little bit of an extra twist when I hook just so I can make my loops a little bit bigger. And let's see, how long will I make this? Long enough to go around my, my leg and tie into a bit of a bow. So what have I got here? That's half. So that's so far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'll make it 44 at the very least. And I always double check by just sort of folding it in half and making sure it goes around my, my leg warmer. So it definitely will go all the way through my leg warmer and now I need enough to tie it into a bow. So maybe I'll make it three times the length, three times I should say the width of half my leg warmer or I'll get a good length and I'll count out my chains. Oops, don't wanna skip new yarn. This can be any number of chains as long as it goes all the way around your leg warmer and then and gives you enough to tie into a bow. So let me see what have I got here. All right, I've made mine 90 chains long. I think that's more than enough to go around my leg, cinch kind of tightly, and then create like a nice drapey bow. And I'm gonna leave tails long enough on this side so that I can tie a jingle bell onto this one too. And I'll be using the tie. So when I get my jingle bells out, I'm gonna slip one strand of yarn through the jingle bell and then knot both my yarns together to kind of like connect it up here and then that will be my my little that'll that'll make it match my jingle bell elf hat and i'm going to weave this right through the top so this is going to be the top and i'm looking for the little spaces between stitches. So I'm going to do like in and out, in and out through each stripe as opposed to each row, just for simplicity's sake. And I'm just going to weave this in and out. I guess I could also use a slightly larger needle. Do I have my larger one somewhere? Here it is. This one's a little bit bigger. There we go, I can actually get it right through. So I will pull it through these spaces. Maybe I'll get about half of it through. There we go. And then out through this one. This is of course optional. I just think it'll add kind of some fun to my leg warmers and it will help keep them up um, because I like my leg warmers to be kind of 
not too snug around my legs, um, just enough that I can sort of squish them down if I want, but also that they're nice and cozy. I can wear them over top of pants or I can wear them over top of like leggings or something. And there we go. Out, in, out, in, out, all the way around. And I'm going to even them up. So. Hold the ends together and there we go, all the way around the top. So now I've got a little drawstring that will cinch up the top of my leg warmer just underneath my knee and I can make that as tight or as loose as I want and then I can tie a little bell. Uh, tie some bells onto the end. Oh my goodness. Maureen! Thank you, Maureen. Thank you for picking up a pattern. Or two. And then I can just tie a little bow at the top and I can leave the little bells to hang down below. And that's how it will look on my leg. And like I said, if you wanted, you could use a ribbon or cording or something like maybe even make a completely different colored uh, drawstring. That's if you want to add a drawstring at all. You can also just sew in a little bit of sewing um, elastic around the top if you want to make it just snug up underneath your knee a little bit more. And then they'll stay up and they'll look cute. I like this. Yeah. And then I'll put my bells on a little bit later. I'll take a picture of that when I've got it done and I'll sort of post it in the community tab for you guys. I will make a second exactly like this one and I will have a pair of festive leg warmers just in time for the snow, which literally arrived today. So that's good timing, I guess. <laughs> good timing. Um, like I said, we've got a tutorial on these that, so it's much more succinct, obviously. You can check that out for uh, construction if you want a more succinct version of today's live crochet along. And I will take some questions here as we're finishing up. Questions, and also I would like to ask if anyone um, would like to see um, some links to any of the tutorials that um, Jada mentioned, I'll try to grab them while Jada's answering questions. Eva says her calf wouldn't fit. Well, Eva, if you've made them and you've already seen them up, just take out the seam, the row of slip stitching, and just add some more rows. Um, I've done 32 rows. That gives me about... 14, 14 and a half inches in circumference, but 36 rows is good for um, a larger leg or if you just want something more sludgy. Or like I said, take that measurement around the widest part of your leg and keep adding rows until you get to that target width measurement. Um, and that way you know they'll fit. Plus, they will loosen up with wear and with washing. So if they're a little snug to start, they will loosen up over time. Yes. All right. We will definitely make sure that one's in there. Cynthia asked, what are these needles? Uh, those are yarn needles or wool needles. That's a, a proper wool needle as opposed to like a, a plastic needle with the big eye that you sometimes see included with like looming kits. Um, wool needles are the, the, the length of the needle is one is like it doesn't get bigger. It's all kind of the same the same circumference all the way along, obviously, except for the, the, the tip. And then there's like a little eye created by the, the plastic wire at the end. Um, lots of different brands make them. I've used them my entire crochet career because I just prefer to use wool needles over the big plastic ones. Uh, mine are by H.A. Kid, but a lot of different brands make them. Uh, Amazon carries them. I think Pony sells them on Amazon. Um, H.A. Kid makes them for the Walmart brand Love Knitting. Uh, and they're usually sold in sets of three, and they're three different sizes, sort of small, medium, and large. Uh, we do not yet have a boot cuffs tutorial, Sandy, but I do have a 
that idea on the list. I've been kind of meaning to make a boot cuff tutorial for quite a while because I have made myself boot cuffs and they're really cute. <laughs> Especially if you wear like wellies or uh, um, tall kind of rubber boots and stuff. But I do have that written down. <laughs> oh, and I'll link to the snowflake pattern. Yes, we'll include that too. Joanne says, Jada, have you ever used the invisible chain? I don't know what you mean by invisible chain. Um, is that like a, a crochet stitch? Because I've never heard of it. I guess that looks like everybody's pretty much satisfied in terms of questions, which is great. I hope we were able to answer them as we went today. Like I said, we've got a tutorial on this. We'll make all the appropriate links in the description box down below afterwards. And um, thank you all for hanging out with us today on a Monday. We've got Fair Isle Friday coming up this Friday. I can't believe we're at number 11. We're at the 11th installment in the calendar blanket. Um, so Fair Isle Friday is this Friday and um, We've got today's written pattern on sale in the Etsy shop for our vertical stripe leg warmers, which as you can see can be pretty easily customized. And that is on sale 15% off today and tomorrow. So if you feel like picking up the pattern and helping us out here, we very much appreciate it. Um, it is more than ever appreciated. <laughs> Things have gotten kind of insane uh, in terms of inflation and pricing for everything these days. So uh, we really appreciate the help because it does help keep us here making videos and tutorials and live crochet alongs um, and uh, we will see you guys soon if you have any additional questions don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below uh, pop into our Etsy shop if you've got photos you'd like to share with the community and if you want to do that make sure you say okay to share in your message with us you can tip um, click on uh, contact shop owner and then click on the little photo icon and that allows you to upload or attach a photo and we'll happily share that. We like to do like kind of groups of themed roundup things. Uh, and all this week, we are doing everybody's Fair Isle style blanket uh, progress, which is just amazing. I love it. So look forward to that. And we'll see you guys um, soon. We'll see you Friday, if not before. Uh, so keep an eye on the community tab. We could post all sorts of fun stuff there. And um, have a great week, everybody. Mr. and Stitches, anything you want to add? Oh, just thanks for joining us, and we will see you Friday. Yeah, see you Friday, everybody. Have a great week. Bye, everyone. Bye.